Christian has come a long way from best-selling Christian books, to movies, to movements, to music, and even to Christian porn. Yes, I said Christian porn. I know. You're probably asking yourself, what the heck is this guy talking about? Well, if you go on Google real quick, you can do a search for XXXChristianPorn.com and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Hi, my name is Leonard Ogonaga from ReligionAndFilm.com and on the topic of discussion today, we'll be discussing two films, Saved in the Last Year, which you'll be able to find on our website, as well as Fundamentalism and Christian Culture. So before we continue, let us define what it means to be a Christian. Usually, when you ask a Christian, they'll give you the usual response of, well, it's somebody who accepts Jesus Christ. And I personally don't feel that that's an adequate enough definition. I believe more that a Christian is someone who believes Jesus Christ to be their Lord and Savior. You see, to accept something doesn't really imply that you believe in it. You can accept the professor, but to believe in him is something entirely different. So for our discussion, we're going to use the definition that a Christian is somebody who believes Jesus Christ is their Lord and Savior. Did you know that the youth movement is booming? Well, enrollment in Christian colleges is up 70%, Christian music is up 300%, 10,000 youth pastors have been created yearly, and there have been evangelizing events at rodeos, Christian skate parks, and even surfing. Yeah, I know that's kind of weird, but nonetheless, it's culture. And that brings us to our two movies. The first one we're going to discuss is Saved. Now, as I watched Saved, I got extremely frustrated. Uh, I laughed more than anybody else because I think the movie's hilarious, because I can relate, uh, I guess, in a sense, to the type of environment. But when you watch these Christians, these main characters like McFay, the female, you just want to reach out and and just choke them, you know, without actually hurting them because Jesus didn't want us to do that. But it's just really absolutely frustrating because when you look at the message of Christ and how it's so anti-legalistic and how it's so accepting and, and how the pinnacles of his teaching are loving God and loving your neighbor, it's like you have these characters that are professing to be Christians, but they're completely ignoring this and it's extremely frustrating. Now... After I watched the movie, the first thing I thought was that this was some type of critique on Christianity, but I, I don't think that's a fair assessment. Uh, it, it's as if like you, you go to a church and the people are really weird or, or they're just really bizarre, and then you leave that church and then make the statement that our, all Christians are, are just as bizarre or just as weird. It's, you see, it's an, unfair, it's an unfair statement. It's like you meet one Puerto Rican, and that Puerto Rican's a jerk, and then from then on you say all Puerto Ricans are jerks. You see, it's, it's not supposed to work out like that. And nor do I believe that it's supposed to be a critique on all fundamentalists, which is what I believe are portrayed in the film, but rather a critique on the aspect of Christianity that tries to uh, make it political and social and make it more of a, uh, a way uh, to to form a society than an actual system of belief. So, to put it into context, it's kind of like you have this film, and the main characters who are professing to be Christians take the role of the Pharisee. They've legalized their religion, uh, and, and it's more of just a lifestyle than, than a spiritual relationship with God. It's as if they're, they're choosing what they want to believe, just like the Pharisees that are described in the New Testament. And they're just completely ignoring how important it is in Christianity to accept and, and, and to love. And we can see this in the other film, The Last Day. Now, here's the story of The Last Day, and you can watch the film on the website. You have a gay individual who goes to a Bible Belt, conservative, fundament, fundamentalist Bible college, and he comes in contact with um, a hypocritical dean and a very anti-homosexual uh, student population, and to keep it short, he has these open dialogues against his father and other students about what it mean, about how accepting Jesus is. So automatically in the two films you can get this clear, you get this point really, really clear, is that the movies both tell you or, or try to portray the message that you should be accepting and that you should be who you are. So I don't think that it's supposed to in any way be a critique on, uh, the, on, on the basic beliefs of Christianity, but rather a critique on those Christian who are professing to be Christians and who are accepting Jesus Christ but not believing him in his message. It's as if the Christian characters like McFay are blinded by this pursuit of righteousness 
and holiness. And just as the mistake made by certain teachers of the law in the New Testament, they're so blinded by this righteousness and so blinded by this holiness that they completely miss the mark of Jesus Christ's teachings. So do I think this is trying to say that fundamentalism is stupid? Well, no, because if you look back to our definition of fundamentalism, uh, fundamentalism, well, I mean, every Christian has to, in a way, be a fundamentalist. I mean, they have to believe in Christ's teaching, they have to believe in the atonement of sins, and they have to believe in the crucifixion. So when I say fundamentalism, as in the title, what I'm trying to refer to is that sect of fundamentalism that has legalized the message of Christ and has taken it out of its context just like the teachers of the law in the New Testament took the message of God through the prophets and through the commandments and completely legalized it. And that's what I think these, these, both of these movies are trying, to, uh, are trying to tell us. Besides telling us to be loving and accepting uh, and, 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 you know, the whole homosexual and, 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 um, and pregnancy themes and stuff like that, I think the core to these movies is that they're trying to tell us I, I think mainly Christians that that we're not supposed to take our religion out of context. Now it's interesting when you watch the movie Saved, uh, the, the characters who are not Christians, uh, like the Jew and and the handicapped kid, like they're actually the ones that come off Christ-like. Because when you think of Christ's message, you have to think of humility, you have to think of love and compassion, and the movie who displays that. You see, the Christians, the fundamentalists in this youth movement, they're all way too busy worrying about, you know, the right thing to do and, and what can make them holy, while on the other hand, the unchristians are the ones that are displaying what Christ was teaching us. And it kind of puts things in perspective. It's like sharp irony that here you have all these Christians in a Christian school, and you cannot find one real Christian. I mean, you can find people who are accepting um, Jesus Christ, but they're not believing in the message. And the people who believe in this message of humility, ironically, are the people that are not Christians. So, in conclusion, what I think the films are trying to say are rather a warning to the Christian community not to make the same mistakes that Jesus Christ taught against. And that was, that was the mistake of, of legalizing religion and, and, and just legalizing uh, the message of compassion and, and love that one gets from a relationship with God. Uh, it's it's, it's kind of just trying to bring the focus back to uh, those cornerstones uh, that Christ talked about of love and forgiveness and, and, and mainly, as, as both films sharply, sharply portray, acceptance because you can't get to uh, the real aspect of, of holiness, not, not the legalistic version, unless you love and unless you accept one another. So without starting a, an extensive conversation on Christian culture and, and how, it's, how it's portrayed in the films, what do you think about it? I know a lot of you out there are really nagged by it and just bothers the heck out of you, but, but why? I mean, there's some good Christian music, and, and there's good Christian books and Christian movies. Well, what about Christian culture annoys you, or, or what about Christian culture that you embrace? I know that some of you may criticize it as being uh, a way of pushing the rest of the world out, and, and as Christians, you're not supposed to do that. You're supposed to be part of the world, because you can't love someone unless you're, you know, you're living next to them. But what about it do you dislike? What about it do you like? And what are your opinions on these two films? Uh, what is something that you believe I didn't see or, or something that you disagree with? Let me know. And once again, my name is Leonard Ogonaga from religionandfilm.com. Thank you.